Today's lesson is for those of you that currently have a crush that you've been thinking a lot about. Maybe you've been worrying about how to get them to like you, or maybe you've been thinking about how to ask them out. If this is you, pay close attention because I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Now, asking out your crush is best done with a simple three-step process. Step number one is to get their attention. You can do this by either going up to them in real life or by starting a conversation using the internet. Doing things in person is usually better because you can look them in the eye, but quite honestly, anything can work nowadays. So messaging and even doing a video call are all just fine. Once you have their attention, you can then move on to step number two, which is to say something along the lines of, hey, I like you. Let's go on a date at blank place at blank time. If you haven't known each other for that long, maybe just a couple of days, you can actually cut out the I like you part and just say the rest of the sentence. But if you've liked this person for a very long time and you guys already have some sort of relationship, then it's very important to say the I like you part so that you lay out your intentions as clear as day. This way, there's no way they'll misunderstand and think you're asking them out to a friendly hangout or whatever. And finally, step number three, you look them in the eye, if applicable, don't say anything, and you simply wait for an answer. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, whoa, 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 improvement pill, that's it? Well, yes, because there's nothing you can say to someone that already knows you that will make them like you all of a sudden. You see, the large majority of people make a decision about whether or not they are attracted to someone within the first day. So it doesn't matter what you do, they already know what their answer is going to be. And it's always going to be just one of the following three things. A, they say yes, in which case, congratulations. You've just saved yourself a bunch of time. They like you. So go and enjoy your date. B, they give you any excuse as to why they can't go, such as, oh, I'm not ready for a relationship right now. Or, oh, I value our friendship too much. Or even, oh, let me think about it. I'm very busy nowadays. Of course, it could actually be because they have something scheduled already, in which case you simply ask to take them out another day and wait for their answer to that. If they continue to give you anything along the lines of the examples I just gave you, it's basically just another way of them saying C, which is a flat out no. Now pay close attention to what I'm about to say. It's in your best interest to get an answer as soon as possible because this answer was already predetermined. Someone who likes you is going to say yes regardless of how you ask them out. Someone who does not like you is almost always going to say no regardless of what you do or how much time you wait. The reason I'm pushing you to take action as soon as possible is because it will save you a bunch of time, which is the most valuable thing you have in the world. It's the only thing you will never be able to get more of, which is why you should not waste too much of it fantasizing about someone who does not even like you back. Learning to value your time will teach you to have more self-respect for yourself, which, funny enough, is one of the most attractive traits one could have. This advice will also help you grow as a person because it will force you to confront pain. You see, if you get rejected, you will be met with a fair amount of pain. And this pain, as sharp and unpleasant as it may be, is actually a good thing. Pain serves as a form of information from the world, a form of feedback that will open your eyes to the truth. You see, there's usually a reason you get rejected. Maybe you don't take care of your body or your health. Maybe you don't have any success under your belt or any passions that drive you. Maybe you don't really know how to talk to people to make others laugh and smile. Maybe you don't have any confidence, no faith in yourself. Maybe you're an unhappy person and you drag down those around you. The list goes on and on and on. There are many reasons why someone who knows you might not like you. Pain is good because it forces you to look in the mirror and think about which areas of your life you've been neglecting. Pain lights a fire within you, so you start taking action. Pain is what ultimately makes you sexy. So to sum things up, be direct and just ask them out, so you can find out the truth about how they really feel about you. And if they reject you, embrace the pain and use it to transform yourself. By doing so, you will drastically increase your chances of getting a yes the next time you ask your future crush out. When I started having a more active dating life in New York City, I ended up bringing a lot of my dates to the same place for the very first date. And literally every single girl that I've brought on these dates wanted to see me again. So today I want to share with you exactly what I did, where I went, and the mindset I had on these dates. So hopefully you can get some inspiration and apply some of this stuff to your own dating life as well. 
Okay, so there's a large park in Queens that I used to bring my dates to. It's right next to the East River and also close to one of the schools that I went to when I was a lot younger. So I'm very familiar with the area. And that's one thing you should keep in mind for first dates. You should bring your date to a place that you're already familiar with so that you feel more comfortable. You don't have to worry about getting lost. You might already know some of the people there. And you might even have some interesting stories about the location that you can share. Anyways, what I usually do is I tell my date to meet me at the train station in the early afternoon. I make sure to tell them not to eat lunch and you'll see why in a second. When they arrive, we start walking to the park together, which is not too far away. It's like a 10 minute walk. And about halfway there, we come across a small track in a schoolyard. At this point in time, I'll say something along the lines of, Hey, so-and-so, let's make a bet. I'll race you around this track and the loser buys lunch. And I'm so confident that I'm going to win that I'll even give you a five second. No, no, no. You know what? I'll give you a 10 second head start. And every time I've challenged one of my dates to this little competition, they've said yes. Now, the reason I do this is because I personally love games and challenges and bets and things like that. This is what I consider to be fun, what I consider to be exciting, which is why right out the gate, I want to be showing them this part of my personality. Because if they aren't into it, then chances are we're not going to have a good relationship down the line. I don't want to be wasting my time with someone who's not compatible with me. And that's the mentality you need to have when it comes to dating. The point of the first date is to see if she's compatible with you. If she isn't, it's totally fine. There's more fish in the sea. But to be honest, I don't think I've ever been on a date with a girl who didn't like to play along. I think games and challenges are almost universally liked by just about everyone, right? There's a reason why everyone says that they want to feel like a kid again. Because when you're a kid, you don't have any worries in the world and all you do is run around playing games. It's fun. It's way better than being an adult, that's for sure. So when you're able to bring back that same sort of fun energy from those good old days when you're on a date with someone, you become a very memorable person. Most people want to date someone that makes them feel young and wild and free again, not someone who makes them feel old and serious and stressed. That's my philosophy when it comes to romantic relationships. So anyways, we race. Sometimes they do in fact win and sometimes they lose. Regardless of what happens, I bring them to the pizza place on the next block. The loser buys a couple of slices and that's lunch. I never take my dates out to fancy restaurants for the first date. I think it's better to save that for a special occasion later down the road if we do end up dating for a longer period of time. So I always end up taking them to more casual places like a pizza place or a fast food joint like Taco Bell. Okay, so we sit down and we quickly eat the pizza. We chat a bit. And once we finish, we start walking to our next destination, which is the park. And it's only like two minutes away. And as we walk into the park, I start telling stories. Now, I spent many years hanging out in this park after school with my classmates when I was a kid, so I do have a bunch of crazy stories. And like I mentioned before, this is an extremely good thing because you want to be sharing interesting stories about yourself. You want to make your life seem exciting and adventurous. People are attracted to those traits. It's just human nature. So I'll tell you one of my stories right now. Close to the entrance of this park are a couple of trash cans that they put fallen leaves into whenever fall comes around. So one day after school, when we were all hanging out, a friend of mine decided to light one of the trash cans that was filled with leaves on fire. And it was a very impressive fire. I had never seen a fire so big before. So we all gathered around to watch this giant metal can burn. And that's when, I'm not even kidding, out of nowhere, what looked like a blind man walking his dog stopped right next to us and pulled out a badge. He was an undercover cop. And he yelled at us, what the hell are you kids doing? Are, are you stupid? Get away from that fire, all right? Just leave the trash can alone. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Let the fire burn out on its own. I guess from his perspective, the situation was contained to just a trash can. I mean, to be fair, in the moment, he was right. The fire was getting smaller and it did seem like it was going to die out on its own. So after scolding us a bit more, he left. But we decided to stay there and watch the fire burn out. And that's when all of a sudden it became very windy and an intense gust of wind blew by and picked up the flames and spread it onto the dry patches of grass around the trash can. And next thing you know, there were a handful of little fires starting and growing all around us. 
it was a crazy scene. I mean, we could have honestly burnt this entire park down if we didn't do anything. So we freaked out and all of the kids in our group took off our hoodies and we were like hitting the flames and trying to stomp them out with our shoes because we were trying to prevent this thing from spreading. We had to save the park. But the main problem was that the trash can was still on fire, and it was still windy as hell. If we didn't get rid of it, new flames would just continue to be picked up by the wind and spread. So three of us picked up the trash can and we ran across the street and we chucked the entire thing into the East River. And that's the story of the time we saved this entire park. So I guess you could say we're local heroes. And these are the types of stories that I would tell on a first date. And whenever I'm telling one of these stories, I'm reenacting the entire scene. I'm pretending to be the blind cop walking the dog. I'm stomping imaginary flames out on the floor. I'm getting really into it. And the whole time my date is laughing her ass off because it's a bizarre and interesting story. And by the time I finish telling my tale, we're pretty deep into the park and we get to the second big event that I have planned for today. All right, so this park is attached to a bridge. And there's a hill that you can climb that will allow you to then climb onto the ledge for one of the giant pillars that holds up this bridge. So at this point, we're pretty deep in the park. We're approaching the bridge, and that's when I tell my date to follow me up the hill. I don't tell them what we're about to do because the moment we reach the ledge, they automatically realize what's about to happen. And they're always very hesitant to come along because it's actually pretty scary. See, if you walk along this ledge, you will eventually get to a point where you're like 15 feet above the ground. And the ledge is also slanted at like a 25 degree angle, so it feels like you could slide off very easily. And if you fall at this height, you're probably not going to die, but it'll definitely mess up your legs. So I always tell my date, come on, come on, it's safe. Trust me, I used to do this all the time. You're not going to fall. And at first, they're always like, no, 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 this is too scary. But I eventually convinced them to slowly climb the ledge with me. We put our backs up against the wall and we slowly inch our way to the very end. And when we get to the end, I have them sit down with me for a couple of minutes to enjoy the view. When you're 15 feet above the ground in this location, you can see the beautiful New York City skyline and a large chunk of the river. It's actually very, very beautiful. But the whole time, your palms are sweating and your heart's racing super fast because, again, it's slanted. So you feel like you're about to fall off the entire time. And this is actually a good thing because danger can cause attraction. When your heart is racing and you're with someone, you actually become more attracted to them because you associate the excitement with that person. Now, I don't plan this with this fact in mind. I bring my dates to this spot because when I was a kid, I remember the rush of excitement that I felt the first time I climbed it. And I want to share that memorable experience with my date. So after hanging out on the ledge, we move to a playground, which is like two minutes away. And here we play on the monkey bars and the slides. And we even play on the swings for a bit where I make sure to push them extra high until they're screaming for me to stop just to mess with them a bit more. Again, this is something that I do on a lot of my dates. I'm always trying to push their buttons, push them to the edge of their comfort zone because that's where excitement and fun comes from. And by doing so, they will associate these positive emotions with you and they'll want to see you again. Now, this brings us to the last big event for the day. So this park overlooks one of the largest rivers in New York City, and you can actually climb over the railing down onto the bank of this river. When I was a kid, we would often climb down and skip rocks here. But the thing is, the area is super, super polluted. There's trash everywhere, broken wooden planks with rusty nails scattered all over the place, stinky seaweed and the occasional dead animal. And to top all of that off, when you climb down there, you immediately realize that there's just as many glass shards as there are rocks. The glass shards aren't dangerous because the running water has made them smooth over the years, but it's still a dirty, sketchy looking place. It looks like if you get cut down there, you get tetanus. All of my dates have been extremely hesitant to climb down to the bank. But just like with the ledge, I end up convincing them to come down. Again, I'm trying to push her to the edge of her comfort zone. When they finally climb down, the first thing I do is teach them how to skip rocks. And here's where I make sure to step up the amount of physical contact I have with my date. Now, I should have mentioned this before. When I'm on dates, I'm making sure to touch my date casually throughout the day. See, touch is something that is extremely important when it comes to forming romantic relationships. When you use touch correctly, the entire experience becomes more intimate and there's also more sexual tension, which is a very good thing because no sexual tension means that you'll end up in the friend zone, okay? 
So throughout the day, I'm making sure to touch my date in very casual ways, such as a tap on the shoulder, a high five, or even having our thighs touch when we're sitting on the ledge. This way, they start to feel more comfortable with the idea of touching you. But when we're down on the bank of the river and I'm teaching them how to skip rocks, I make sure to step it up a bit just to show them that, hey, I like you and I'm not afraid to get a little bit more intimate with you. So I'm doing things like holding their hands to show them how to throw the rocks. I'm standing behind them, adjusting their back so they can get into the right throwing posture. Nothing too crazy, but also something that you wouldn't normally do with just a friend. If people saw you touching your date like this from afar, they would assume that you guys were a couple. So after a while, we're successfully skipping rocks and we're talking, getting to know each other even better. And of course, I'm telling some more stories. There's a story about the time we went into the sewers further down the bank and we bumped into some homeless people in the actual sewer system. Uh, there's a story about the time one of our friends decided to swim in the river and a giant cargo ship came by and it almost hit him. He almost died. And there's even a ghost story from over a hundred years ago about a ship that caught on fire in this very river and where hundreds of people died, and how sometimes you can see strange green lights moving up and down the bank. Ooh, scary. And it's between stories where I usually go in for the first kiss. But that's basically it. We hang out on the bank until the sun starts to set, and once that happens, we climb back up, and I walk them back to the train station so that they can go home. There's one last thing I want to leave you guys with before we wrap this up. Everything that happens on these dates are things that I genuinely enjoy. I enjoy challenges like the race in the beginning. I enjoy telling the crazy stories from my past. I enjoy having a little bit of a daredevil experience. I enjoy playing on the swings and skipping rocks. When I share these experiences with someone else, they get a taste of fun and adventure, something that is quite rare nowadays, something that is quite hard to replicate by bringing someone to a coffee shop or a restaurant or the movies for a first date. And that's why most of my first dates are so successful, because I leave a strong, lasting impression. I become someone they can't forget. And that's what you should aim to do too. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon. And besides that, guys, stay tuned.